Hello and welcome back to Talking Europe. Less commuting, more remote working, a temporary drop in air pollution. This is perhaps the silver lining in the dark clouds that have hung over Europeans in this difficult year of 2020. But have we really moved to a different and perhaps more sustainable way of living? That's the uh, key question that I want to put to my two guests in this debate, uh, Dutch conservative Robert Rose and Spanish Green Ernest Urtasun. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, being uh, my guests uh, today. Um, if I can start on a personal note, I'd just like to hear, you know, how have your jobs as MEPs changed this year? I imagine you were both working uh, from home at least some of the time. Uh, maybe Robert Rose first. Well, I've been, um, I've been in the parliament uh, all the time because for me it's only 150 kilom kilometers to drive. And um, yeah, well, working from, from behind the, the computer is, is, uh, is an option and it's a good addition. But uh, I like to be with my staff and, and to, to, to be at the work itself. So I, I can do it because it's only 150 kilometers. And even when the, the register was closed and we didn't receive our, uh, our travel expenses, I went to the parliament. I, I've been there a lot of times, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Ernest, what's your experience been uh, briefly as well? Well, I live in Brussels with my family, uh, and I've been coming to the office as well. Well, I am in the office now, uh, but uh, but uh, pretty isolated. All my staff is working from home, uh, and we are not having physical meetings, so um, everything is uh, behind the screen. So yeah, it has changed. And personally, for me, it has changed because I'm not traveling to Barcelona anymore, uh, and I used to travel very often there because it's my constituency. I can't do that now. So this is, uh, yeah, something which is very, very new to me, even though I have reduced my carbon footprint thanks to that. So it's not that bad at all. <laughs> okay. Well, on that question, uh, that actually leads into uh, the soundbite that I wanted to play to both of you. This is uh, from Corinne Mayer, who's a French economist whom we interviewed this week. Uh, she's the author of a book called Hello, Laziness, Why Hard Work doesn't pay. Uh, let's take a listen and then I'll get your reactions to that from both of you. I think we have to work less or in a better way and we have to consume less and we, we have been uh, raised to, to earn more and more money, to try to be richer and richer, uh, to have big, big houses, big big cars, uh, nice holidays, very far away. And I think it's, uh, it's not sustainable. We, we can't go on like this. And so what is difficult is to imagine a, a world where uh, the, the word less is the best. So can we imagine a world where less is best, uh, a complete change in our thinking. Um, Robert Roos, what do you think of that? Well, uh, I, I'm an, entre an entrepreneur and, uh, and, and, and also involved in politics now, but as an entrepreneur, I worked all my life very, very hard. Uh, well, sometimes uh, 70, 80 hours a week. Uh, that's not um, th th that's normal, so, but, but I, like working so for me it's not a uh, uh, you know it, for, for me it's good and 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 consumption i think it's not a bad word it's what what drives our economy uh, consumption means income and, and employment for people and, and employment is also um i think it's also good because it, it's it's uh, it gives people uh, a goal in in life I always carefully consider my own purchases and consumption pattern, and I would advise everyone to do the same. But in the end, that is everyone's um, individual to decide on their own. I understand that it's, it's very interesting for academics to and schoolers to reflect on society in a post-corona world, but that's something for them. In the real world, people and companies are struggling with, um, with pandemic and economic adversity. And I think that you can only invest in a better future when we earn the money to do so. So our prosperity has brought us also a lot of good and also for the environment. Um, and as uh, your, your reactions to what uh, your, your colleague has just said there. 
Well, I think there are two fundamental changes that the pandemic has posed that people have been uh, um, experiencing and talking a lot uh, also in the last year. It's not, it's not that new. First, it's the role of care activities in our, in our economies. I think that we are now all more aware of the need of having more time uh, to take care of our relatives, uh, to have more time uh, to take care of the people that uh, we uh, that we are feel more cl more close to. I think that uh, we used to have uh, lives uh, that uh, were going at the at the 100 kilometer speed, uh, not thinking really what matters in life. And I think that this pandemic has shown that all of us want to spend more time with our relatives. And I think that the the the, the economics of care will have more importance in the next in the next uh, in the next years. And the and the second element is the limits of the planet. Eh? The idea that the economic expansion uh, has to take into uh, into account the limits of the planet. I think that the pandemic has helped us a lot in putting environmental and climate uh, concerns more on the core of the agenda. Uh, um, for instance, in the cities we are experiencing in all Europe during the pandemic, a huge transformation towards a more sustainable way of living and, and, and moving ourselves. And I think this is this is important. So th those two issues, the economies of the, the economy of, of, of care, and uh, and the ch challenges of uh, climate and environment, I think, are more present in our lives today. I, I just want to ask you both about uh, some of the latest announcements from the European Council in uh, in Brussels, and particularly on Europe's climate ambition. What you think about it? Uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the Commission President, tweeted. Uh, she said, "A great way to celebrate uh, the first the first anniversary of the EU." Green Deal, hashtag EU Green Deal. You can see it there on our screen. Uh, she says, Yuko has endorsed our ambitious proposal for a new EU climate target. Europe will reduce emissions by at least 55% by 2030. Uh, on that question of the Green New Deal, Robert Rose, uh, I'm just looking at your uh, activity on the EP News Hub. I think you were either re uh, retweeting uh, or, or tweeting yourself about uh, the Green New Deal. I think you've been a bit sceptical about whether it will actually create jobs uh, or yes. uh, help productivity. Is that correct? And, and if so, why do you think that? Well, yes, that's, that is correct. Uh, EU climate policy making is led by a desire to become uh, climate neutral without a rational plan that can lead the member states to this result. The EU is, is not likely to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. That's, that's, that's what I think, uh, there, because there is no well-definite plan to, to get there. There is no cost-benefit analysis has been done on on alternative policy options, uh, some viable options, most notably, notably uh, nuclear power, are not seriously uh, considered. And, and global emissions continue to rise uh, and even have no signs of, of peaking. In my opinion, we should follow the path of, of no regret by using nuclear power. And that reduces emissions and also take care of affordable energy in the future. That will never be a failure. And the, the best example is, is France, with 70% of its energy produced by nuclear power. And we com if we compare that with Germany, then we see there is uh, that the energy price is 40 to 45% lower than Germany, and France has only 10% of the emissions of Germany. And, and Germany has already spent 165 billion euros on renewables. So I, I think we 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 chosen uh, we have chosen the wrong. Path of the EU has chosen the wrong path. Uh, has the EU chosen the wrong path, uh, uh, Ernest Urtasun? No, I don't think so. I think that we are just uh, trying to commit with our international uh, um, uh, commitments, uh, which is that we are uh, that we will develop policies to try to limit the global warming by uh, one. 0.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, we were on track on having a, a global warming of four degrees, which is a disaster for human beings and for biodiversity, but also for human beings. And I think that uh, that's why I think going for a, a, a fast uh, decarbonization of our economies is very much needed. Uh, the agreement of this uh, of the last council is positive. Minus uh, 55% uh, uh, um, in 2030 is a positive move. The parliament wanted 60 but the, the reference of the Council to at least 55 is a positive move. And uh, in relation to nuclear, I can only say that, uh, well, 
uh, we, uh, it cannot be a solution taking into account that we still have huge safety concerns and we only need to look to what happened in Japan very few years ago. And secondly, I don't want to leave uh, to future generations huge amounts of nuclear radi radioactive waste which we don't know how to deal with it. So I would rather follow the, the example of Germany and boost uh, renewable uh, energies uh, who, that, by the way, have created more than 700,000 jobs in the country. So this is also a way of boosting our economy. Just because we're running out of time, a quick final reaction to that from you, Robert Rose. Well, it, it has created uh, uh, jobs, but there are also jobs are disappeared and nobody talks about that. Uh, we had uh, an institute, a uh, very well institute in the Netherlands, uh, who had the same message. Uh, jobs are being created, but they forgot to to um, uh, they forgot to, to to take into account the jobs that are, um, are are has been gone. So in the end, it will not uh, create jobs. In, in, yes. Okay, we'll have to end it there. Thank you so much for uh, that discussion and for your ideas, Robert Ross and Ernest Urtasun. And that's all for this edition of Talking Europe. We'll be back again very soon. Thanks for watching.